Good morning, children. Now I'm going to start with Vedic civilization. Yesterday we had done the amusements, yes, and the occupations of the Vedic people, the early Vedic people. Today we are going to do the social life of the early Vedic people. This is the second part of the video and the first part I had just sent you yesterday. Now the social life of the early Vedic people, family, a joint family was the smallest unit of a village. The people at that time, during the early Vedic times, they stayed in a joint family and it was headed by the senior most male member or patriarch. Senior most male member of the family, he was the head of the family. It was a patriarchal system. Patriarchal is in which the males, they are dominating and they are holding a position in the family too. This system is called patriarchal system. Patriarchal system means that the eldest male member of the family was the head of the family. Now the position of women, position of women at that time, women held a position of respect in society. During the early Vedic times, the women, they held a position of respect and they could attend assemblies and offer prayers. So they could attend the assemblies, they could give their views on everything, they could give their suggestions and they could also hold prayers. Religious ceremonies were considered incomplete without the women. Now, Varna system is the caste system, the Varna system of the early Vedic age. At first, society was decide, uh, divided on the basis of Varna, that is skin color. On the basis of skin color, the society was di uh, divided. The fair-skinned Aryans, they considered the dark-skinned Dasas inferior. The Aryans, they were fair-skinned, so they considered the Dasas who were dark-skinned inferior to them. The Dasas were the original inhabitants of the region where the Aryans settled. The Aryans had come from Central Asia, but the Dasas, they were the original inhabitants of the uh, place where the Aryans had come and settled. Gradually, a system of social division based on occupation came into being. Then after this, a system of uh, a system of occupation that what kind of work you are doing a system based on occupation what kind of work you are doing in that society was divided on that basis the society was divided this developed into the caste system and varna started meaning caste so varna was caste first it was color complexion whether you are fair skinned or dark skin and then after that was the caste system according to the uh, kind of work you did according to your occupations the four castes from the highest to the lowest during the early Vedic times were the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and Shudras. The Brahmins, they held the supreme position in society. Then were the Kshatriyas, the soldiers, the uh, warriors. And then were the Kshatriyas, the business class people. And Shudras were the fourth class of the society who did all the menial jobs. The priests who looked after religious matters and recited prayers were Brahmins. The priests... They looked after all the religious matters. They were Brahmins and they held a high position in the society. The king and the warriors who protected the tribe from harm were Kshatriyas. The king and the tribe, all the soldiers, they were called the Kshatriyas and they protected their people from the enemy. The Vaishyas were mainly farmers and craftsmen. People who were craftsmen and the farmers, they were Vaishyas or the business class people. Dasas and those Aryans who disobeyed social rules belonged to the Shudra caste. Okay, Dasas, they were the dark-skinned people and some of the Aryans also who disobeyed the social rules. So as a punishment, they were put into the fourth category of the society that was the Shudras. So these were the four prominent castes which were there at that time during the early Vedic period. Then what kind of religion did the early Vedic people have? In the beginning, the Aryans, they worshipped the forces of nature. The forces of nature were worshipped by the Aryans such as Prithvi, Earth, Agni, Fire, Vayu, Wind, Indra, the god of rain, Surya, the sun god and Varun, the sky god. Now their most important god was Indra. Their most important god at that time during the early Vedic time was Indra and they worshipped all the forces of nature. There were no idols. Idols means there were no statues, no temples were built at that time. Prayers were chanted in open air. Rituals were simple and fire was an important part of such rituals. Fire was an important part of such rituals. It was held very sacred. So this was the religion during the early Vedic time. And now we are going to do a portion of the later Vedic period. So now children, we have revised this. Okay, please go through it slowly and you will understand it. Now the later Vedic period, 
in the beginning of the later Vedic period. The Aryans learnt the use of iron. They now moved towards Kurukshetra and Hastinapur on the banks of the river Yamuna. So the Aryans, they started moving towards the banks of the river Yamuna, towards Kurukshetra and Hastinapur. Now this is about the later Vedic period. The use of iron tools enabled them to clear the dense jungles of the region. Because of iron, they could, because of the, using the iron tools, they could clear the dense jungles of this region. And from here, the Aryans spread along the Gangetic Plain and the other three Vedas, namely the Sam Veda, the Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda, were composed during this period. So during the later Vedic period, the three Vedas, the remaining Vedas, that is the Sam Veda, the Yajur Veda and the Atharva Veda, these were composed. Towards the end of the later Vedic period, that is around 600 BC, the Aryans spread from the Ganga Yamuna Doab to Kosala in Uttar Pradesh and Videha in North Bihar. And Videha in North Bihar, they started spreading to these parts. Now, political life of the later Vedic Aryans. The king was the supreme commander of his army as well as the chief justice of his kingdom. During the later Vedic period, the political life is that the king was the supreme commander of his army as well he was the chief justice means he uh, acted as a judge also. His prestige depended on the extent of the area he controlled. Prestige, his honor depended on the area he controlled. He adopted lofty titles. Lofty means huge, big titles like Samrat and Maja, Maharaja Dhiraj. He had these big titles like Maharaj and Samrat. Maharaja Dhiraj and Samrat. He performed yagnas or sacrifices like the Raj Suya to gain more power and Ashwamedha to expand his kingdom. As kingdoms grew larger, kings became very powerful. And the Prohit's position rose in importance as he performed the rituals. Now, like I told you, the Brahmins, they held a supreme position. So now as the rituals, they were becoming very important at that time. And the king was performing so many sacrifices. So naturally, the Brahmins position became very important and it increased. He increased in power. He got more power. The Sabhas and Samitis, they lost their importance and they were dominated by the Brahmins and princes. They were dominated, both these, uh, both these assemblies, the Sabhas and Samitis, they were dominated by the Brahmins. The princes and women were no longer allowed to attend their meetings. The women and princes, they were no longer allowed to attend their meetings. At the village level, the village assemblies, they carried on the administration. So this is the political life of the later Vedic period. So children, just go through the video, try to understand it. Okay, and you will just read the chapter before coming to class. Bye-bye and stay safe.